have reportedly signed a ceasefire. An official said the deal between President Ali Abdullah Saleh's government and General Ali Mohsen al Akmar will see the release of people detained during pro-democracy protests. 13 died, killed by security forces claimed in the latest violence. Seven died in Tice, while six were killed in the capital, so now the demonstrators have been calling for months now for the president to leave. So let's talk to Mohammed Kubati. Talks for the opposition party, the Yemeni National Council, also previously an advisor to the country's prime minister. Yes, we have had this sort of thing before, but on this occasion, according to our sources there, for the time being at least it is holding. There is a ceasefire. Is there hope? Well, uh, actually, they don't call it a ceasefire. It's called a pacification agreement. You know how to, you know, just to keep the two uh, position uh, opposing groups of, of from the army far away from each other. But the question is, how did it start? It start. I mean, we are not facing actually a war there to have ceasefire. We have got demonstrators. We have got people who have been protesting in the streets of Yemen for the past nine months, and the remains of the regime wants to use force. They are obviously completely in contradiction of the uh, Security Council number two. But, but, but let's get back to this thing. We, we, we have the, the government forces yes. and the main uh, disaffected forces, those that have um, deserted the army and have been supporting the protesters, come into some kind of agreement. Yes. Uh, is that a sign for hope in any way? No, you see, the, the sign for hope will appear if, if, if actually the, the regime agrees to implement the resolution, the UN resolution two, 2014. Uh, that resolution, obviously, the government is trying to play a lot of gimmicks around it. In which case, why would those who are disaffected with the government, those that have deserted, sign any kind of agreement, agree to any kind of a deal? Yes, my friend, I'm trying to explain. What's happening today? How did that agreement reach? We've got demonstrators, people protesting in the streets of Yemen. Today morning, what happened? The tail of the demonstration was hit by the government forces. So, the people who are siding with the protesters came against them. So, the d demonstrations will continue, whatever the regime does. Would the regime allow those demonstrators, according to the wishes of the United Nations Resolution Council now, which uh, uh, there stipulates that these protesters should be allowed to protest peacefully, it's part of their rights. If the president and his forces allow those people to continue, then it's okay. Nobody is going, there won't be any confrontation. The forces uh, siding with the, with, the, with the protesters is just only actually defending those people, defending their rights to protest, defending their rights to ask for the, for the president to be actually prosecuted in front of the criminal international. With the greatest respect, but we understand what they're trying to do yes. um, in confronting each other. My, my question is, and you, you promised to answer this, but my question is, if there's no real deal between the two, why would it benefit those opposing Salah to agree to any kind of pacification agreement, ceasefire, whatever you call it, why would they do it? Yes, because if they, are, they would be there, they, they, they are just saying, if you stop killing those protesters, we will not confront you. That's the whole idea. That's why we call it a pacification. It's, it's something just to try and calm the, the confrontation. But the, conf the, the confrontation just stems from the idea that the president is trying to hit the people. If he stops from hitting the people, then there won't be any an military confrontation. That's the issue. I mean, would the president be happy to continue with the requirements of the UN uh, resolution 2014? Is he going to sign the, the agreement and so on? Things will move for, uh, peacefully forwards. But it's obvious that the president is eventually will drag the, the, the whole country into a, a confrontation. See what happened today. This morning we had Eight of the Syrian pilots who have, received, who have uh, arrived, uh, you know, recently in Sana'a, their, their, their plane, their transport, military transport plane, uh, plane was just blown. Suddenly, Assad is coming to the help of, of Ali Abdullah Saleh. Obviously, Ali Abdullah Saleh has got some other intentions. People were killed in Ta'iz everywhere. They're killed because he will, and the, and the, and the, and the pacification should not be only in Sana'a, it should be all across the ground. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Kibar. Thank you very much.